The following display is intended as an observational aptitude test. Please watch the following multimedia presentation closely and note any issues with the scene. <sighs> Super duper double dip sugar choco cone, please. Here you go, kid. Whoa, way cool. So, if the issue that you saw was that there was a toad in the boy's ice cream, then congratulations, you're not wrong, but you may not be ready to see what this game has to offer. Now, if you saw the fact that he clearly ordered a chocolate variety of ice cream yet received a pink cone, which, correct me if I'm wrong, is usually associated with the strawberry flavour, and he didn't seem the least bit concerned that his order was wrong, which makes absolutely no sense, well then, I think you're ready to hear about Battle Beast. Why did no one play Battle Beast? Ugh, look, no. In an effort to steer clear of the intentionally malicious hyperbole that I'm just so prone to doing, I'll ask this instead. Why did N plus an indeterminate amount of people play Battle Beast? <laughs> Battle Beast is a side-scrolling fighting game released for the PC in 1995. Another interesting fact from the Wikipedia page is that back in 1995 it was considered to be a prime subject for a future retrospective review where it can be used under a false pretense to make jokes about unrelated things. Battle Beast was my first ever fighting game and I have so many vivid memories of playing it, but it did very little to interest me in the genre I think because it didn't have character designs like most fighting games do that gave me those special feelings that adults have. Attraction, seduction, temptation, and divorce. I like this game in concept, but it's also not very good but you won't find that out until the end of the video. This format is a difficult beast to battle. It's not really a review now that I think about it because I'm not really telling you whether or not to play it and it's certainly not a retrospective because it's on a 60 minute exercise in self-indulgence. Trust me when I say that there are methods of self-indulgence that take far less time. So that leaves what? A freeform video essay masquerading as a review? That way I can make fun of an old game and we all get off watching someone tear down something that we all have no personal stake in. And it's good because I guess that means I don't really have to structure it, so it works for me. The origins of this game in my life weren't just mysterious, they were difficult or impossible to understand, explain, or identify. I believe my mother got it for free with some computer she bought one time, and to this day I have met absolutely no one else who has also played that game my mother got for free with a computer she bought one time. It wasn't up until recently that I looked up footage of it and saw reviews trashing it and people clearly misremembering how good it was. And finally I felt vindicated because it turns out it hadn't been just one elaborate fever dream I'd concocted in primary school to try and get attention because I wasn't a very interesting kid. The truth of the matter is that Battle Beast isn't bad so much as it just isn't good. <laughs> no, but that's not everything I'm going to tear apart for your vicarious enjoyment. So if you're reaching for a wad of tissues because you think this is the end, well, you might need a Red Bull or something because we are not even close to being done. I don't think I've ever showed this game to anyone before, mostly because before I ever could, well, call it fate or maybe just a run of bad luck, but one day I dropped the disc. It was unplayable. It was broken. Would I ever be able to share this game with anyone again? Was Battle Beast lost entirely to time? There, there is gameplay footage, I obviously have a copy. My favourite thing about this game is everything that isn't the actual game itself. It's the world building. Which may strike you as odd because the story or accompanying premise is never really that important in fighting games. But for some reason they're always so weirdly complicated. Alternate timelines or a game being set in a pachinko machine in canon. Fortunately the premise of Battle Beast is a simple one. The evil Toad Man has unleashed his army of killer toads across the city to cause Tonally awkward mischief, with no real establishment of ground rules, severity, or any greater plan. <laughs> you play as one of six battle beasts, a new item on the market. Cute plush animals that can morph into fierce robots that can kill toads better than other conventional weaponry, I suppose. 
in essence, the core gameplay is fighting against battle beasts. And that's because the bad toad man hacked the legitimate battle beast. So you have to square off against them. There's also apparently counterfeit battle beasts as well. And I honestly shudder to think what they look like. I thoroughly enjoy the fact that these aren't just some collective initiative by the government or the army or something, even though there's an army sergeant who's in the game for some reason. The only good frog is a dead frog! They aren't implemented as this last line of defense against the toads. You actually have to buy them in this world. It almost seems like some kind of world that has a word with the word punk after it. But the more I thought about it, the more sense it made. Can you imagine in Bioshock if they just gave out plasmids to the people that needed them instead of giving them to the people that could actually afford them? Well, I think Atlas just shrugged. So like I said, there's six battle beasts, one representing each of the deadly sins. Wrath. Wrath. Ra I'm gonna say wrath for all of them. Wrath. Wrath. And... Wrath. I said I was gonna say, look, call it good character design or maybe just good audio design, but they're kind of scary. I always like Tor or Torkuda. He's this smug little green rhino that turns into a big dragon. Yeah, tough guy, big boy. I always hated Kulapesh the fish though. Anytime I had to play against an enemy, just beat him down, I'd always pick Kulapesh. I think it's his eyes. They seem especially robotic. It's just like, there's nothing there. Honestly, I think Kulapesh is the reason I still pay the extra 10 cents for the plastic bag at the grocery store. It's the only way I can take the fight to them. Generally, they're all pretty well designed. And with my experience of overly colorful anthropomorphized animals, the commissions on these bad boys can't have been cheap. The majority of the world building and plot of Battle Beast is told through the newspaper that also acts as the main menu. It's populated with lots of little articles filled with 1995 tier ha-has. And you know what? They still hold up today. Then there's these little videos about the Toad's exploits that they included. And the fact that they managed to fit videos into a newspaper is probably a lot more impressive than the fact that consumer grade robot fighters exist. Oh my, so much to choose from. Oh look, my face. <laughs> A toad is hidden in a meat packet at a grocery store, jumps out, scares an old lady, stealing her dentures. That's the sort of thing you'd write in your fan-made screenplay for an episode of Rick and Morty that no one would ever watch. It almost feels absurd for the sake of absurdity, but it doesn't stop there. <laughs> <laughs> I assume this guy was dead. The toad took his hat, which is probably symbolic of something. There's just this lump in the bag where his, I can only assume, mangled corpse is. Oh God, you can, still, you can still hear him. Oh, he's actually fine though, he's fine. If you read the newspaper, it's, he says he's fine. It's the same as the old lady, same as the stupid kid with the ice cream. And now I think you can start to understand the comedy of Battle Beast. The toads are presented as these super dangerous killers, but all they do is effectively just cause mischief with these weird musical stings to tie together the absurdity. <laughs> and you know what, it is still kind of funny, just not intentionally or rather not through the intention that they were probably hoping for. This isn't a successful execution of humor, it's just absurd. Oh. Oh, she's, she's brutally, brutally drowned. Brutally drowned. That, uh, oh, that is, that is not where I saw that going. All this plot and world building is nice, but we must be honest with ourselves. The plot in these sorts of games is completely secondary, or in some cases, the plot can be quite primary. The people saying that they play fighting games for the plot are the same people who say they watch Goblin Slayer for the deep characterization of the female characters. Realistically, the reason they were fighting is irrelevant, because we as humans will look for and accept any pretense for battle. Money, land, religion, perhaps purely to exert our will upon another. We'll fight for any reason. You point me in a direction and I'll start swinging. Humanity is truly the world's battle beast. Because, because it's the name of the game, you get it? And what is humanity's favorite game if not war? 
If you've read Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace, you'll know that a major theme is just of how irrational the motives of mankind truly are. Honestly, the book is so integral to my analysis here, I'm just going to assume that everyone has read it. But I suppose for the sake of this review, don't worry if you haven't read it, neither have I. It's very long. I'm told that the most important thing in fighting games is an expression of playstyle. It's why having a diverse and robust roster of characters is so important. It would be unfair to expect a 20 character cast from a game like Battle Beast, so even then a 6 character roster is decent, that's 6 different unique playstyles. Honestly, even if some of them doubled up if there was a couple of clones, that's not entirely a bad thing, it gets done in games even to this day. Fox and Falco, so similar, yet so different, you can probably see where I'm going with this. So all of the characters are exactly the same. Not Marth, Lucina, the same, like functionally identical with very few exceptions. Each of the casts do have their own unique animations for all their actions and the animations are good as well. But ultimately they're all just window dressing for the same mannequin underneath. So I noticed during the edit when I was matching up the animations there does seem to be actually very minute differences in their durations but I'm gonna make the call and say that the speed at which the game plays you are not going to notice it like you would in another fighting game plus it could just be an issue with the playback. Also seeing as you can initiate what is essentially an infinite combo with any singular move I'm gonna say that that's not the biggest problem we have with these animations. <laughs> plus I've got a bit of a narrative that I'm pushing here so let's not stray too far from it thanks. Now that is a rather intrepid claim that means fearless to say that all these characters are exactly the same. Because it might not even be true. I don't even know how to check that, but I said it so you're gonna have to believe me. I want to say that all of their hitboxes are exactly the same, but unfortunately there is no frame data, no $4 DLC or a great Reddit mega thread that I can regurgitate back to you as if I discovered that information, as if I'm somehow intelligent for reading someone else's work and making no additions to it myself. However, if I overlay these identical hitbox graphics that I made over the characters, they hold up to just enough visual scrutiny to make it seem like I'm right, and that works for my argument. I peruse the digital manual for the game to try and find some semblance of a combo list, and all I get is just more lore. Like, jeez, there's so much background in this game, you're gonna be able to make weekly build and lore videos for years. It has a lot of weirdly worded tips as well. Tips that don't really help. Minimal punctuation, minimal sense. They all seem kind of ominous. So after you pick your character and watch them get manufactured, your little baby beast is sent into the sewers that act as the stage select. You race against your opponent to get to a map first and the winner also gets some bonus time to kill toads in the area for points or unlock one of the secret rooms or bonus stages in each map. Now you're asking about killing the toads for points, clearly the points have a purpose. You know, what do you need to get the points? That is a uh, that is a good question. You transform into your beast for the fights, but you can also fight in your baby form. But weirdly you can only kill toads as a baby and not as a beast. Wait, is that what the manual was trying to say? Yeah, that almost seems like an English sentence. <laughs> and this is about where the timeline splits. Originally, I had written an almost 3,000 word film treatment highlighting Battle Beast's implementation of their interpretation of standard fighting game mechanics. This is a tragic manuscript, as it is not only very long, but also very boring. Uh, no, that's the wrong clip. It's comprised of insights I've gleaned from discussions I've had with my friends that do actually play fighting games. And it's practically punctuated with my patented, I'm not claiming to be an expert, so you can't get mad at me, phrase, which has started to become an even bigger self-defense mechanism for me than my constant need to make jokes. And while yes, I do admittedly have a fairly long history of playing fighting games as a kid, I was also pitifully bad at them, and the only fighting game mechanic I ever actually understood was jiggle physics. I think it just comes back to the fact that I don't like to completely criticize something without offering some form of valid reasoning or a potential solution, and in this case I have absolutely neither. So what I'm going to do is instead of trying to explain or justify why Battle Beast mechanics don't fit the standards of the genre, I'm going to just list the problems I have with them. And hopefully if any of you lovely people watching are perhaps fighting game aficionados, you can pick one of the topics, timestamp it, and then explain in a comment why it doesn't or perhaps does work in a fighting game as a whole. How does that sound? Don't, don't, don't answer out loud, this is a recording, I, I can't hear you. So your inputs in Battle Beast are 1, 2, and the directionals. The window between pressing 1 or 2 and a direction is really small, so it makes performing an attack quite difficult, and this is only made worse by the fact that there are no neutral attacks. 
This means you're in a position where it's very difficult to perform an attack or play out a strategy even with any form of intent or purpose. Each character has 25 bullets which act as your limited projectiles and you can get special varieties in some of the secret levels. You will now be entrusted with a weapon of increased firepower! Now the only thing you'll be short of is body bags! Toad sized! And each beast is weak to a certain kind of ammo. For instance, Nazator is weak to missiles, unlike the rest of us who simply brushed them away. I checked, and yes, he is actually taking more damage from them. Uh, forgive my surprise, but this is actually the successful implementation of a game mechanic. It's a shame they couldn't do it more. Seeing as you can also get buffs to projectile damage, it seems stupidly busted if you can just get a free amount of extra damage off on someone for just getting to a stage first. Mocking a game from 1995 for not being natively widescreen is equivalent to yelling at your mum for buying a birthday cake from the supermarket because she didn't have time to bake one. She's trying her best, all right? Now just help her cut up the strawberries and put them on top because the people are going to be here soon. All the stages live in this small little square world with big black bars on the side. So you have to play with what you got. But when many attacks seem like they hit from upwards of 50% of the screen, it makes everything feel so claustrophobic. Blocking doesn't negate damage, it just lessens it. There's a power grab which I think is meant to block all damage, but it drains your health while you use it. Also, there's no grab. The biggest combo you can achieve is two hits. That's it. I've tried every combination of attack and only this one works and you can't even get it higher than two. I just don't understand where they were like, oh, we've got to integrate combos. It's a fighting game after all. But what you'll likely have noticed is just how rough this game looks to play. Understandably, it is a 1995 game made for DOS, so no one's expecting 144 FPS, but the disconnect in how it feels to play goes far beyond that. I wanted to use an example of a fighting game from around the same time, and I have a PC copy of Mortal Kombat 3, but I cannot for the life of me get it to run. It's, it says it does, can't find the disc, and I, I'm running it off the disc. That, like, what? Oh, but you might say, you can buy Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3 on GOG for just $8. <laughs> Alrighty then, we're Mr. Fancy Pants Billionaire over here. I suppose we all just have $8 lying around. Look, with like the $4 I made in YouTube revenue, I bought a can of Red Bull and a grapefruit. So I'm, I'm fresh out of cash. For the comparison example to work, the other game does need to be 2D, and the only other 2D fighting game I have is Skullgirls, and that came out in 2012. So the whole point of the example kind of comes completely irrelevant, because it's not from the same time period. But I have no academic integrity, so that's not going to stop me. When you play Skullgirls, it feels like you're actually controlling an object, and that object has all of its hitboxes attached, and then just has the visuals pasted on top. So even if an animation only has, say, 10 frames but still lasts for 2 seconds, it isn't choppy because the object is the thing that you're actually interacting with, not the animations. But in Battle Beast, it feels like there is no object and you're just controlling the animations, the, the pictures even. Yeah, the best analogy I have, but it feels like you're brushing someone else's teeth. You know what I mean? I don't know if this has any basis in game development theory whatsoever, but I'm not an expert. Oh, I'm doing it again, aren't I? Um, uh... Oh my, so much to choose from. Oh look, my... <laughs> the baby form has been mentioned if only to highlight their redundancy in terms of fighting. They are just about worse in every way than their robotic counterparts, but for the fact that they can kill toads and trigger the bonus stages. But only for one person at a time, so it kind of makes couch co-op a little bit dicey. Despite that though, the bonus stages almost entirely cover their cost for admission. Some just let you pick one of the special projectiles, but others revolve around killing toads at various stages of the life cycle for points. Look, I'm from Australia where cane toads are a pretty serious pest, so let's just say that virtually anyone with a driver's license probably has a lot of points, if you know what I mean. The odd one though is the nursery stage. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit dark. Yeah, that's right, General. Let the beasts do the dirty work for you, because they, they're not going to come after you if the blood's on the beast's hands, right? And, and you know, even if they do, even if they do, we're all just following orders, right? 
I think much like the baby toes in this level, the baby killing bonus stage hasn't really aged very well. Battle Beast doesn't seem like it's worth the amount of time I'm giving it, but I feel like I'm just trying to figure out why I liked it so much as a kid, because it clearly was not the gameplay. For every negative point I list, I just think back to as a kid how much I liked the art style and how the animations had so much personality to them. But looking back on it now, I think Battle Beast has great personality in the same way that a homely 4 out of 10 has a great personality. You give it more credit than it deserves because you feel bad. It's easy to forget why we're doing all of this in the first place, and it's to defeat the evil Toad Man. After seeing all this though, I'm starting to think that maybe the Bark Lady had it coming. So after all these bouts of Robo Yif and a run-in inside the Toad Man's house, which I think speaks a lot to his upbringing, you face off with him in his lair. And it turns out he's, he's a battle beast too? They really made absolutely no effort to establish the rules of this whole robot morphing animal technology. The player with the most points is the one who faces him, kind of like how approaching challenges work in Smash, just with less evidence of Dexedrine withdrawals. <laughs> the Toad Man functions the same way as everyone else, but for two key differences. Giant green titties and way more health. But adding more health doesn't do to the game what the giant green titties do to me. It doesn't make it harder. More health doesn't add a layer of difficulty, it just adds a layer of tedium. No one played Skyrim on Legendary Difficulty for fun. <laughs> Last, my moment of utter triumph. If you don't beat him, he takes over the world, but if you do, get to see the big boys. I was the Toad Man. The problem with the gameplay as a whole is that we're left with some gameplay elements that make sense in single player modes and some that really only make sense in two player modes. The point systems, the bonus stages, the fact that you verse the same beast over and over again even in one player. The whole point system seems almost tacked on and arbitrary. The thing is, I like the bonus stages in concept, but there being bonus point stages is predicated on there being a point system, so we find ourselves at an impasse. It ultimately feels like two different game modes mashed together into one homogenous paste. What did you call me? No, no, I said homogenous. As I said, no one has done a deep dive in this game. None of the info is out there. There's no combo lists, frame data, startup animations. I've had to do it all myself, and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So there's a good chance there are major inconsistencies or issues of what I'm presenting. I don't even know what I'm supposed to think about this game. The only two reviews from the time I found are just completely and wholly apathetic. But that is ultimately the beauty of retrospective reviews, because now you can just find a nice pre-packaged opinion on a game that you don't care about and save yourself the trouble. I've never read War and Peace, but thanks to Spark Notes, I know all the major themes, what the chapters are about, and enough to make reference and conversation and sound a lot smarter than I am. It's like, in high school, as a part of my authentic Australian English curriculum, we had to read this book called Deadly Honor. It talks about how racism is bad with about as much subtlety as War and Peace has regarding Tolstoy's opinions on Napoleon. Am I right? The point is, I was continually told by teachers how great and important this book was, but every time I tried to read it, it was just so boring. At least To Kill a Mockingbird was sort of interesting with the whole legal battle subplot. Deadly Anna is about Australian rules football. Cowabunga. But this book is an Australian classic, which just means that no one outside of Australia cares about it at all. So there's no spark notes, no chapter summaries. This means that if I wanted or needed an opinion or understanding of this book, I'd have to actually read it myself. And that's the point I'm making. I haven't read it, but I still have a very firm stance on the fact that it's a terrible book. The only reason I know story elements is based off cobbled together accounts of what other people who have read it have told me. Maybe if more people had told me how good it was, that would have swayed my opinion. Really makes you think. But of course this has nothing to do with this review because that would be some pretty ham-fisted subtext and you know I'm not very good at that. I think a lot about why this game exists. This is the only fighting game 7th level had ever created, so did they just want to try something new or were they forced to get with the times? Virtually all I've done is criticize this game and that's because being cynical is funny. The comedy value just tearing something down is just so high even if you've never seen or played the thing on trial. It is possible to have a funny and positive review but you need to focus on experiences and things that happen in the game, not the actual game itself. But when your experiences with the game boil down to you confusedly mashing buttons because you're like 6 years old and your older sisters are just standing there saying yeah. This is why I fucking play visual novels. This is not a good game. H have I said that? But it's not actively bad. It's not malicious or lazy, it's just a failed attempt in my opinion. There's so many small details and thoughtful choices that wouldn't be there if this was just a lazy cobbled together cash grab. 
the animation, the intro cartoons, the newspaper, the fact that when you do this attack as a baby to another baby, it does this. Like I said, baby combat really isn't that much of a thing, so why would they go to all the effort to add this feature if they were just bad, lazy developers that didn't care? I was looking into a where are they now sort of segment and I found that one of the leads actually works on Magic the Gathering Arena, so anytime you play that, I just want you to have this fresh in your mind. <laughs> I, was, I was actually able to reach out to some of the people who created Battle Beast to try and get some answers, I suppose, and they, uh, they actually invited me out to Dallas, Texas to come meet some of the team that created Battle Beast to do a sort of interview segment, I guess. So um, <laughs> I, I guess this is my vlog of going to the seventh level studio. So at this point I've said positive things and I've said negative things and naturally in this format it has to lead to a final conclusion. It's exceedingly unlikely that you ever played this game and even less so that you're going to play it now as a result of this video. And on the off chance that you did play it as a kid, that would have been so long ago now that your thoughts and opinions might not be so relevant and you might need to update them. If you're still convinced that this is a great game that I've been unfair, go back and play it and get back to me, you can edit your comment later. Regardless, this means that my thoughts and conclusions will likely heavily impact your opinion on this game. And that's the problem I have with retrospective reviews as a form of primarily entertainment. I'm not trying to get you to play or not play this game, it's likely that you're just watching this because you want to see the funny clown dance, or because this video has a million views and you're trying to see what all the fuss is about Battle Beast. <sighs> The beauty is that in this situation, I can really say anything I want about Battle Beast because no one's gonna fact check me. In fact, I've lied about three major things in this video and you don't know what they are. Or perhaps I haven't lied at all and it's all true. The thing is, I don't have to give a review because it's not like you're gonna track down a copy of this 25 year old bad fighting game and extensively play it just to spite me. Actually, wait, no, that could be my review. Also, don't read Deadly Anna. It's not very good. 